Yo, what is up, guys? Ultra Ball's back for another Snake Draft game. Uh, this time we got P2 versus Ojama. Uh, quickly going to the teams before this gets started. So P2's got some Venus Stila action uh, with Electric Seed Halucha. Uh, Halucha looks like a big threat for Ojama if uh, the Tapu Koko takes any sorts of damage. So, uh, because I'm assuming based on the team composition here, we have AV Gear with Defensive Lando, which is like a pretty common defensive core. Um, and Defensive Lando can't really touch uh, Halucha. It actually just gives it free SDs. So, like, HP Ice doesn't do that much. So, the, the, the Halucha check is the is the Coco. The problem is if the Coco doesn't have, like, Roost and it starts taking a bit of damage, then it could easily get in range of plus two high jump kick. So, uh, definitely Halucha looks like a huge threat. For uh, on Ojama's side, uh, it looks like, of course, we have, like, um, Megalop. We have the Defensive Core Lando gear. Specs are Bandit Hoopa. I would assume Scarf Lando, and I don't know for sure. Maybe Z-Move Coco, but we don't know for sure yet. Um, but overall, it looks like Hoopa is a huge threat to P2's team. Uh, whether it be Specs or Bandit, it just kind of clicks the dark move, uh, whichever one it is, and it's going to, like, claim kills, or at least severely dent stuff. So, uh, here Ojama um, probably doesn't want to stay in unless he's got Fake Out, which he does. Alright, so now P2, in all likelihood, like, I mean, Ice Punch doesn't do that much if this thing's defensive. If it's offensive, it would suck, though. That being, like, a lot of lo lobs don't even run Ice Punch, but it's still worth, like, scouting for. So if P2 does stay in here, it kind of, like, gives away that he's Scarf. Like, if he, we'll see what he goes for here. So Ojama goes into Landers as P2 um, U-turns. So, yeah, I think I would assume that because he U-turned like that, I would assume that it's Scarf, um, Scarf Lando on P2's team. And Ojama gets some nice juicy helmet uh, recoil off there. Uh, and I assume here you go into Gren. Uh, and I think it's a free spike for P2. Because Ojama's probably going to be forced into gear. Which is like a, I mean, overall safe play for like any form of Greninja. So I think we're going to see gear come out here as we see a spike get laid up by P2. Um, <laughs> or Ojama. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, dude. Ojama's too hot, man. Oh my god. That play was so fire. Uh, free freest rocks of his life oh my god all right so now we're definitely going to see the switch into gear um that was a hot play to rock uh this that's a play that i make on ladder all the time but not one that i'd have the balls to make um in a tour game so props to ojama for that fire play uh we're gonna see something i'm surprised i went for dark pulse that was like a weird play i felt like gear was fine i'd go for the move that hit gear the hardest if, if you didn't have hp fire probably hydro like, you should have at least one of those. Like, I don't know what the other set would be. Unless it was, like, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, Extra Sensory, or something like that, completely walled by gear. Which sounds bad. Um, that's the problem with Protean Grand that I have, though. Is, like, you run spikes in one move slot, and then, like, your other three moves, you just can't cover enough stuff in three moves. Like, you want to be able to run, like, eight moves. <laughs> be able to hit everything. Uh, but, yeah, so now P2 is probably, like, okay, like, Ojama's play... We'll see what he goes for here. Like, he spiked to try and block Volt Switch, but uh, Ojama makes a good play Flash Cannoning. Because, like, Venusaur seemed free for P2 there, so you could see him, like, Volting on the, the Venusaur, but he makes a good play not going for Volt. Uh, so P2 goes into Venusaur here. It's kind of forced to Synth. So I think he could have Volt Switch there, but I guess Hard into Hoopa was fine regardless. I guess, like, he was afraid of, like, him blocking the Volt Switch with, with Landers, but then the Venusaur would have been weakened, and, like, if Landers switched in here, like, Hoopa didn't really cover that either way. So, but Hoopa is in now, and it's going to click Dark Pulse or Hyperspace Fury, whichever one, if it's Bandit or if it's Specs, we'll see here. Uh, but whichever one it clicks, it's probably going to kill something or come close to it. Uh, P2 doesn't have a great switch. I think, like, Sack Gren, maybe, is a play. Um, yeah, so Sack Gren. I guess we get to see what kind of Hoopa this is now. Is Dark Pulse, so I assume it's Specs. I guess it could be some wild thing, like Z-Snatch or... Nasty plot, something. I, I doubt it, though. It's probably just Specs. Uh, the, the only Hoopas I'd ever would use in this tier is Specs or Band at the moment. So, uh, P2 now could either go into Landers or Coco and, like, threaten this with U-Turn. I think they're both fine. Uh, the thing is, if he goes Landers, then he's, like, walled by opposing Landers. If he goes to Coco, it, it's... This is, like, a hard play for Ojama, right? Because he doesn't know this. Coco could be Specs, and it could be Physical. Um, if it's Specs, you probably want to go into Gear... Um, and if I was P2 and I'm Specs, I'm clicking Dazzle here, just because it, like, hits the landers if he was going to try to go to that. Um, if I'm Physical Coco, I'm clicking U-Turn 100%. So, with that in mind, I think Ojama's best play would be go to AV Gear, because the only thing that Coco would threaten it with would be, like, a Wild Charge, but I don't see you ever going for Wild Charge here if you're P2. 
Like, I think if you're P2, like I said, if you're physical, you probably ju you're probably just clicking U-turn because you don't want to wild charge on the lander switch. You lose a lot of momentum. And um, if you're specs, you don't want to, like, Volt or Thunderbolt on the Lando either. So you'd probably click Dazzle. So I think either way... So, like, if it U-turns or Dazzling Gleams, I think Gear is the best play for Ojama. But, yeah, you're definitely not sacking the Hoopa. There, there's no way that you sack that because Hoopa is, like, kills every single Mon. So you're definitely saving this. Uh, and it comes in a lot, like... Whenever like Venusaur comes in on the to check the or whenever Venusaur comes in on the gear, it could just get vaulted on, and then Hoopa comes in for free pretty much. Uh, so we'll see here what Ojama does. But like I said, I think his best uh, action course of action here would be going to gear. If P2 is like Z Wild Charge and he goes for that now on the gear, that'd be a fire ass play. But we'll see. Uh, taking who's taking their time? Ojama's taking his time. I understand. Like the the problem with with Coco is like if you don't know if it's special or physical, it's really hard to deal with the first time it comes out because like the both sets do have like a different set of, of like counterplay. So um, the first time the the Coco comes out, it's hard to deal with. So he does go into gear. We'll see what. Oh, is it Z Wild? Z Wild Charge? Z Wild Charge? Ah, uh, that's L. Um, yeah, I don't like that play by P2 at all. Uh, just because like. Um, if you if you did expect him to go into to Landers, which you already know his helmet, you could have just normal dazzling gleamed and then like threatened the Z move on the next turn. Uh, I don't think there's any need to go for it hard there, uh, because like now you just wasted the Z move, which could have been useful for the Lando later on in the game. So now you just kind of yeah, it's just kind of a waste. Um, but yeah, like Ojama made the play that I thought, which would be go into AV gear, which seemed to cover most of the things that the that the Coco would be doing there. Uh, but now, like, uh, assuming we saw Twinkle Tackle, I don't know this the set for the Coco. If it has some sort of, like, um, momentum move, like U-turn Volt Switch, it'll probably go for it here. And I think, like, what Ojama could do for sure is just Volt on Venusaur, which I think is the freest thing. Like, I definitely think P2 is going to just go to Venusaur, whether it be a hard switch or U-turn Volt Switch, whatever. I think his plays to go Venu. So if I was Ojama, I'd probably just Volt right now on the Venusaur and get my Hoopa back in. And now who's now? Yeah, P two's thinking about his play here. Uh, we'll see. Like, I mean, it could be like call mine sort of thing, but I doubt it. Like that that set's like not terrible, but it's it's not nearly as effective as, as Coco's other sets. It's like call mine T bolt D dazzling gleam roost. Um, but yeah, okay. So he does U turn right, but like, what does he U turn into? If he goes Venu, yeah. Did did he volt? Did he volt? Did he volt? Nah, he just flash cannon. Damn. He keeps trying to catch the landers, but P2 is, like, not going to make that play. And I, like, I, I actually, like, yeah, I, I'm i glad that P2 is not making that play because it, it really triggers me whenever I see people do that. Because it's, like, objectively a bad play to, like, go landers on the gear, just expecting Volt Switch. Um, so, yeah, Venusaur is always the play. The problem, though, is, like, when you do go Venu now, you open yourself up to, like, getting Volt Switched on right here on the Synthesis. Uh, and then Hoopa's coming back. And, like, he's forced to synth, so did he Volt? Uh, he fly I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that play by Ojama. I thought, like, Venusaur there was kind of forced. The Venusaur was forced to synthesis to be able to check, like, the, the Coco. So I would have definitely, um, vol or I would have definitely vaulted there on the synthesis. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much because Hoopa's coming back in now anyway. The, the problem is, though, Ojama just took a huge hit uh, with that Earthquake on the gear. So now, whereas before, Magirna still would have been healthy enough to live a hit from... To live a hit from uh, P2's Tapu Koko, it's not going to be able to anymore. Uh, so yeah, gonna, yeah, now it's going to die to T-Bolt. Well, I think it might die to Rocks. It's at like, what was it at? It was at like 13. Oh, so we don't know based on Showdown. It might be dead to Rocks or it comes in at 1. Either way, it's pretty much dead. Uh, so we see Dark Pulse does 50. I actually think that's Spidef, Spidef Stila. Uh, I'm pretty sure Specs, uh, to like the standard mixed defensive, does more than that. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's Spidef. Yeah, Spidef Stila. But, like, there's no reason for Ojama to do anything except for spam this. Uh, P2 probably wants to keep this. I mean, this mod looks nice because it, it deals with the Landris and it deals with the Latios. So I would probably keep this around. Um, like, your only play, like, you could sack Venu maybe, um, but then Coco becomes a problem. The thing is, like, right now Venusaur is too low to check Coco anyway. So he goes into his own Coco. This is going to take so much damage. Wait, let's let's wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Holy shit, that did so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> that did so much. All right, so uh, if P2, we don't know the full set yet, right? We know Dazzling Gleam, and we know U-Turn, and T-Bolt a given. So the, the fourth move's either Taunt or Bruce, I would assume. Um, if it's Roost, I'd go for it now because, like, Oj like I said, Ojama's never, um, never staying in with this. Uh, to this is too important for him. So, um, I think P2 could easily click uh, Roost here if he has it. But if he's taunt, like, then he doesn't really have a play. He could just click Dazzling Gleam because Ojama's probably just gonna set gear at this point. Like, gear, de like, there's no reason to like risk Landorus or risk anything. Um, I think you just go gear sack it. And like I said, but like if P2 does have Roost, like now would be the time to go for it, uh, for sure. But that did so much damage, Jesus. And he's got no hazard removal, so yeah, and he does just sack the Magir, and it did die to rocks, and we see Dazzling Gleam. So he probably didn't have Roost. Like I, like I said, I think if he had Roost, he should have went for it there. Um, but yeah, this thing's dead to rocks now, so Ojama's free to click Return, I think, because... Like, if he wants to go hard into um, Landorus, like, since it's offensive Landorus, it's still going to take a good chunk from Return. And, um, but at the same time, like, Coco, like, why would you ever, yeah, you're not switching out Coco, that's true. So if you have Power Punch, that was a better play, for sure. Because, like, you're not switching out the Coco because it dies to Rex anyway. But what Power Punch does is it, like, pretty much forces the Halucha to attack you now. Because, like, you're going to kill it with Return otherwise. And if you, um, if you didn't click, uh, if you didn't click Power Up Punch, then that would give the Halucha a free SD, I think. And, like, Halucha was forced... Or, like, Haluch is forced to come out now anyway, though, because you're losing your terrain. So, like, P2 is forced to go to this. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be able to win because, like, uh, he's forced to attack the, the low bunny here. And then he's not going to be able to kill the, um, he's not going to be able to kill the, the Tapu Koko on Ojama's side. So, we'll see here. Yeah, so he does acro. Um... And now, but, like, now Coco could come out. The thing is, I think Coco could have kind of come out for... F it could have... It could have... If he wanted to keep the low punny, he could have switched into Coco hard, I believe. Uh, the only way that would have been bad is if Halucha had Poison Jab, which they don't really run anymore. Um, normally, you see Drain Punch or, or Stone Edge for Zapdos. But uh, the Coco's at 84, so I'm pretty sure even if the Halucha SD'd, it'd be able to live any hit from 84 and kill it with either... If it's, like, a Specs, I'd probably go for Dazzling Gleam. And if it's Physical with Wild Charge. Um, but either way, I think, like, going... If you wanted to keep the low punny, going hard, Coco is definitely a good play. Because the chance of Halucha clicking um, Swords Dance was pretty low. And even if it did click Swords Dance, like, you still probably live a hit. So I think going hard, Coco would have been a fine play, too. To in, If you wanted to save low punny. Um, yeah, low punny could be nice still in this game, for sure. Um... But yeah, now, like, if I'm Ojama, I'm clicking Dazzling Gleam if I'm Specs for sure. Uh, but he's not. He's actually physical, so he clicks uh, Wild Charge. Alright, so, and yeah, we did see it was Edge. It was Edge um, Halucha. So yeah, like I said, uh, Coco would have been able to lift plus 2 Edge. It would have done 80. It comes in at Spikes, and it's at, like, 82, 83, or whatever it is. So, yeah, this is Scarf Lando, though. So I think, like, um, I think that Landers could just click U-Turn here. If it kills, he could click U-Turn. Um, otherwise, I would be nervous about clicking U-turn and Coco staying in uh, if it doesn't kill. But I'm, I don't know. It might be a roll. I'm not sure. Uh, he gets rocks up. That was a good play on P2's part. Uh, so it's Scarf Rocks. The thing is now Ojama's free to go for U-turn here on his uh, Landers because P2 is like forced into Steela because I'm 99% sure that this is uh, Scarf Rocks Lando, which I've I've talked about before in my other videos. It's definitely a thing, um, as, and it's pretty good. So. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing... What are, what are these nicknames? I'm just seeing them. What is this nickname? <laughs> what, what, what is that name on the Halucha? What is that? That's not okay, dude. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> Alright, so he's... I don't like that play by Ojama going into Coco. I, I think U-Turn was fine. And the thing is, like... Okay, so if the... Maybe the Landers didn't have U-Turn, and that's why he made that play. But the thing is, the... Um, the Landorus was locked into Stealth Rock, so I think you could have, if you didn't, even if you didn't have U turn, I would have gone hard into Hoopa because saving the sack would have been nice. Um, and there was no reason to necessarily sack the. I don't think there was a reason to sack Coco there. I think you could have either U turned, and if you didn't have that, just go hard Hoopa, because like I said, this is definitely Scarf Lando. I'm positive about it at this point. So uh, I think Hoopa, yeah, I think going hard Hoopa would have been a fine play there instead of like you sack the. Like I understand that the, the Coco died to hazards anyway, but that could have been a useful sack to keep for later. So, here, um, we're going to see a switch out into the opposing landers on Ojama's part. So, I think P2, like, 
He could U-turn or he could hard switch to steal if he doesn't want to take helmet. But to be honest, I don't think the helmet's going to matter. Like, that helmet damage doesn't matter because it's going to be in range of Hoopa. Like, this Landers is always in range of Hoopa and uh, Latios regardless. So I think it's fine U-turning. Like, it doesn't really... Yeah, like like I said, the um, the helmet damage on Lando shouldn't matter at this point. Uh, but now, the thing is, like, Steela looks incredibly scary for uh, Ojama to deal with. Because he only has one Mon that could deal with it effectively, which is Hoopa. Hoopa only has one more switch into Hazards. So now I think P2's free to just... Um, P2's free to just leech, leech up here. And... Oh, assuming this is, like, HP Ice, uh, Earthquake, Stealth Rock... I don't know, protect, toxic, I don't, we don't know the last move, I don't think it's U-turn, because he didn't go for it last time, so, uh, we'll see what the, what, uh, P2 goes for here, uh, oh no, now, I, P2's definitely going for lead seed, we'll see what Ojama has here, but, he's not, he can't go hard Hoopa, and he can't really go hard Ladio, like, he doesn't really have a good play on this, I don't think, like, this is, like, almost gonna win the game, alright, so, it's, oh, it's H, it's HP Fire, that's interesting, okay, so HP Fire, I'm assuming, uh, well, obviously for Scizor, but, like, I'm assuming more so it's for Kartana, which Kartana's, like, a bitch, so I've seen a little bit more HP Fire Lando come up, uh, recently, but, um, that's so lame, though, that P2 missed that Leech Seed. That, that sucks so much, dude. Uh, so, like, this thing could have gotten, with, like, Leech Seed and Protector, it actually could have gotten out of range of Hoopa. That sucks for P2. P2's always getting hacks in these games. Um... Leech Seed and Toxic, the two moves that are the most game-changing misses that you could have. More than, like, anything else. Those two moves suck to miss so much. But he could still leech up here. Uh, the thing is, like, what I was saying before is I think that this Steel is Spadef. So if it is, we'll see when it, if it gets, a, if it's able to get a Beast Boost on this Lando, it's going to be able to deal with the Hoopa possibly. Uh, depending on how much, uh, depending on how much, uh, health it could gain f here from the Landers. And it is actually gaining health because, like, the HP Fire is still only doing 17. So between lefties and Leech Seed and Protect, it's still gaining health here. So, assume we see Protect here from P2 as we're going to see an HP Fire come out from Ojama. Like I said, Ojama doesn't have another play on, like, for the Steela. He can never afford to go, like, hard, uh, hard Hoopa, really. Because if he ever goes hard Hoopa on, like, a Leech or on, uh, like, any sort of attacking move, it's, that's game over immediately, so... I think Ojama's kind of just forced to stay in and spam these HP fires. But yeah, P2's able to play this right, I think this Steela could win. Because if Steela's able to get um, a Spadef boost, and then it'll be out of range of Dark Pulse, it could kill the Hoopa, and then uh, probably stay out of range of the of the Latios, too, at that point. So, he tries to leech there again on the switch to Hoopa. Uh, we're kind of in like the 50-50 territory here. Uh, but like, I don't think Ojama's ever risking the Hoopa. So yeah, P2 finally eventually does protect... Uh, the thing is, this Lando's so low now that I think you just click Flamethrower and you get your Spadef boost, and then you win the game with uh, Steela, right? Um, I'm pretty sure Steela wins. So it's crazy. Like, I thought this whole game, I thought Ojama was in the driver's seat, but now, like, I, I actually think P2 wins the game. Um, yeah, it's something that I actually didn't really see coming. As the, the game was playing out, I thought Ojama was playing really well. Um, but yeah, the Steela looks like it's going to win, I think. Uh, so you just click Flamethrower here, right? And then... Yeah, I don't know what Ojama could do about that. Because, like, you can't go into anything. Uh, so, do we see HP... F wait, wait. Wait, why'd he heavy slam? Nah, I that was a choke, dude. No, P2, no. Because <laughs> now now this is in range of Dark, of, of dark Pulse. Why'd he do that? Damn, that sucks. Man. It was a really good game. It, it kind of sucks that it came down to, like, a misplay like that. I think, though, like, because... Right, so if it didn't take that helmet damage, it still obviously kills Lando with flamethrower from 19. So you kill the you kill the Lando with flamethrower, and you'd ha you'd be at 41. Uh, the dark pulse, uh, the first dark pulse on on um, on Celesteela did 50, right? So that means that with the Spadef boost, it's doing about 36, 37, somewhere in there. And this uh, the Steela would have been at 41. So it could, first of all, it could protect when the Hoopa comes out. So it protects, it goes up to 48. Um, it gets Dark Pulsed down to about 10 to 12, and then it kills it, and it gets more lefties back to 20. It protects again on the Latios, goes up to 25, uh, and then it, it, then it should be able to beat the Lottie one-on-one -on -one from that point. So yeah, I think this would have definitely won the game if he clicked Flamethrower, but now I'm pretty sure Ojama wins 100%. Because Ojama just clicks Dark Pulse here and kills this Steela. 
Um, if P2 switched out the Landers and sacked that, then Hoopa just wins because... Like, he, he can't switch out because, like, if he switches out, the Hoopa just wins right now at this moment. So what he... He has to sack this and then go into Landers. The problem is Landers just wins... Um, or, I'm sorry, then the Latios just wins at that point. Um, so, yeah. So he does sack the Steela, which was his only play. So now the game's over, right? Because P2 goes into Landers. He has to lock into U-turn, but I'm almost positive that this Latios is Scarf and just kills it with Psy Shock. So that should be game over uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, P2 says horrible choke on my part. I agree. Uh, that was... Um, I think he choked. I think he won for sure if he clicked Flamethrower. It, it was a really well-played game, too, by both by both players. I thought they both played well for the most part. Uh, it just sucks that it came down to, you know, like a uh, choke like that, so... Um, and we're gonna look, I'll look at what Ojama says after this game ends. But yeah, so I'm assuming this is... Oh, it's... Wait, it's not Scarf Lottie? Oh, that's weird. Well, it might have been Scarf Coco then, maybe. But that's a bad... That's an unset. So maybe it was Scarf Coco. Um, I guess so. P2 actually could have still won there with a crit, which is kind of crazy to think about. I was assuming this was Scarf the whole time, though. But yeah, so what does Ojama says? I kind of choked two by sacking Lop. I was convinced it was over. Um... Yeah, I don't really agree with Ojama there. I think he was... No, I, it's true. It is kind of true. Like, he could have went hard. Like I said before, he could have went hard into Coco on the Halucha. And if he went hard into Coco, even if the Halucha SD would be able to live a Stone Edge and kill it with Wild Charge. So overall, yeah, I think Ojama's right. I think his play there with the low Bunny, instead of sacking that, I think hard uh, I think hard Coco was a fine play there. Uh, and then keeping the keeping the low Bunny to be able to dent the, uh, dent the Stila. But yeah, okay, so the, the recording ends there. Uh, okay, the one thing I want to say before I sign off, P2, you need some better nicknames, man. Dude, those were those were not those nicknames were not okay. <laughs> At all. But yeah, Ojama comes out with the win here. Uh, it was overall a good game. Kind of a shame that it ended on like a kind of like a choke. But uh still a good game overall. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe to my man Dakarich, and until next time, Ultra Balls out, peace.